brother is two years older, and we've likely spent tens of thousands of hours, and then some, in the woods together, whether it was building forts, BMX tracks, camping, or hunting, we've traversed all across the US, exploring every area we can. Since 2016, we've made it a point to do so whenever we get the time off. I feel it's important to add this because there's genuinely nothing I wouldn't do or fear when I have him by my side. This time was different though, and we both felt it. We've had our fair share of adventures and stories to tell of all sorts, but this one has been a lingering stain on my memory. We are both in our mid-twenties, and it was around 2019. This was probably my fifth time hunting in this area, and the first time I brought my brother along with me. It was a large forested area of public land with a few country roads. Essentially, two tracks that stretched for miles throughout the area. We made the trip up in my truck with our tents. Three in total. One for each of us, and another to change in and keep our gear. Without making this long-winded, we set up camp a couple of miles from the truck, which we had driven quite a few miles throughout these winding trails. We were now basically in the middle of nowhere, with the nearest main road probably eight to 10 miles away. We arrived late at night to the camping area and set up camp. We quickly fell asleep after all the work we'd done that day. The next day, we spent scouting and tracking, then made it back to camp for the night. We cooked, ate, and had some beers as well. The night was still early, but we'd had quite a long day and decided to head off for some rest. Everything up until this point had been pretty normal, when suddenly I was awoken to something smacking against my tent. I heard my brother's voice calling out my name. I knew something was off. I called back to him, and immediately he unzipped my tent and made his way inside. I could tell that he was disturbed. When I went to ask him what was wrong, he immediately grabbed my shoulder and told me to be quiet. The sun wasn't even up yet. I think it was around 4.30 or so. We sat in my tent, and what we heard still confuses me to this day. I can only explain it as someone making whale sounds of different tones, an extremely loud noise that I could feel throughout my body. It would come and go, and there would only be a few seconds of silence in between. It started to vary from high-pitched squeals to everything in between, very low sounds that literally felt like they made me shake with the reverb. Regrettably, I didn't think to grab my phone or record anything that was going on because what I was hearing didn't seem real in the moment. I was struck by the sound. It went on until daylight started to break. I believe it was about an hour or so, but I'm not really sure. Neither of us spoke the whole time. It felt like I could feel this ominous energy around me almost like my body was covered in white noise, if that makes any sense. It wasn't even minutes after the sound stopped that it started to rain. It was one of the craziest thunderstorms I'd ever seen while camping. The forecast hadn't predicted or accounted for any rain on the days we were going to be there prior to planning out the trip. All the stakes for the tent with our, picked up the phone to dial 911 my heart pounding in my chest. As I spoke to the dispatcher, my voice trembled, recounting what I had just seen. The figure outside continued to approach, its movements unnaturally steady, despite the pouring rain and gusting wind. Within minutes, I heard the sirens in the distance, growing louder as the police cars approached. I remained huddled in the living room, peeking out cautiously through the curtains, only to find that the figures had vanished into the darkness. When the police arrived, I recounted the events of the night, feeling a 
sense of relief wash over me as I watched them comb the area outside with flashlights and search dogs. But to my dismay, they found no sign of anyone or anything unusual. The rest of the night passed in a blur of questioning and unease. As the sun rose and the storm subsided, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that lingered in the air. In the days that followed, I tried to convince myself that it had all been a trick of the mind. A combination of fatigue and the eerie atmosphere of the storm. But deep down, I knew that what I had seen was real and that it would haunt me for years to come. Since that night, I've never been able to shake the feeling of being watched, especially during storms. It's as if those hooded figures are still out there, lurking in the shadows waiting for the perfect moment to reveal themselves once again. And so, I live with the knowledge that some mysteries are never meant to be solved, and that sometimes the most terrifying things are the ones we can't explain. Similar dangerous activities. As an urban explorer, I thrive on the adrenaline rush of discovering hidden places and forgotten relics. But nothing could have prepared me for what we encountered on that fateful night. We embarked on our journey equipped with our cameras, flashlights, and a sense of excitement that bordered on recklessness. Our destination was an abandoned asylum rumored to be haunted, tucked away in the desolate outskirts of a small town. As we approached the crumbling facade of the asylum, a shiver ran down my spine, and a sense of foreboding washed over me. The building loomed ominously in the moonlight, its broken windows gaping like hollow eyes. Ignoring our instincts, we pressed on, determined to capture the eerie beauty of the asylum's decay. We entered through a broken door, our footsteps echoing eerily in the empty halls. The air was heavy with dust and decay as we ventured deeper into the labyrinthine corridors. Every creak of the floorboards sent chills down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. As we explored further, we stumbled upon a series of disturbing graffiti murals depicting scenes of violence and madness. The walls seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, and I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of unease. Suddenly, we heard a noise echoing from the darkness ahead, a faint whisper that sent shivers down our spines. We froze in terror, our senses on high alert as we strained to identify the source of the sound. Then, without warning, the darkness erupted into chaos as a horde of shadowy figures emerged from the shadows, their eyes gleaming with malice. We barely had time to react before they descended upon us, their hands clawing and grasping at our flesh. In a panic, we turned and fled, our hearts pounding in our chests as we raced through the labyrinthine corridors. Behind us, the echoes of our pursuers grew louder, their unearthly shrieks filling the air with dread. We stumbled and tripped over debris, our breath coming in ragged gasps as we fought to escape the nightmarish horde that pursued us. But no matter how fast we ran, they were always one step behind, their twisted forms closing in with every passing moment. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, we burst through the shattered doorway and into the cool night air, our lungs burning with exertion. We didn't stop running until we were far from the accursed asylum, our minds reeling from the horrors we had witnessed. In the days that followed, we tried to convince ourselves that it had all been a hallucination trick of the mind 
brought on by the oppressive atmosphere of the asylum. But deep down, we knew the truth. We had come face to face with something unspeakably evil. Something that should have remained hidden in the shadows. And as I sit here now, recounting our harrowing ordeal, I can't help but wonder what other horrors lurk in the forgotten corners of the world, waiting to be discovered by those foolish enough to seek them out. Treasures, just empty rooms filled with dust and debris. It was as if the place had been stripped bare, leaving behind only echoes of its former purpose. As we moved on to the second building, we found ourselves in what appeared to be a laboratory of sorts. Broken equipment littered the floor, and shelves lined with dusty bottles and jars loomed ominously in the dim light. Rick eagerly began examining the remnants of the experiments, his eyes alight with curiosity. Meanwhile, Morty and I ventured further into the depths of the building, our flashlights casting long shadows on the walls. We stumbled upon rows of rusted cages, their doors hanging open, as if whatever had been imprisoned within had long since escaped. The air was thick with the smell of decay, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone in the darkness. Every creak of the floorboards sent a shiver down my spine, and I found myself constantly glancing over my shoulder half expecting to see something lurking in the shadows. Despite our growing unease, we pressed on, determined to uncover the secrets hidden within the abandoned installation. But as we delved deeper into the labyrinthine corridors, it became increasingly clear that this place held more than just forgotten experiments. It held something far more sinister. Suddenly, we heard a noise echoing from the darkness ahead, a faint whisper that sent shivers down our spines. We froze in terror, our senses on high alert as we strained to identify the source of the sound. Then, without warning, the darkness erupted into chaos as a horde of shadowy figures emerged from the shadows, their eyes gleaming with malice. We barely had time to react before they descended upon us, their hands clawing and grasping at our flesh. In a panic, we turned and fled, our hearts pounding in our chests as we raced through the labyrinthine corridors. Behind us, the echoes of our pursuers grew louder their unearthly shrieks filling the air with dread. We stumbled and tripped over debris, our breath coming in ragged gasps as we fought to escape the nightmarish horde that pursued us. But no matter how fast we ran, they were always one step behind, their twisted forms closing in with every passing moment. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, burst through the shattered doorway and into the cool night air, our lungs burning with exertion. We didn't stop running till we were far from the accursed asylum, our minds reeling from the horrors we had witnessed. In the days that followed, we tried to convince ourselves that it had all been a hallucination, a trick of the mind brought on by the oppressive atmosphere of the asylum. But deep down, we knew the truth. We had come face to face with something unspeakably evil, something that should have remained hidden in the shadows. And as I sit here now, recounting our harrowing ordeal, I can't help but wonder what other horrors lurk in the forgotten corners of the world waiting to be discovered by those foolish enough to seek them out, pushed me to continue downwards, driven by the allure 
of uncovering what secrets lay hidden beneath the surface. With a deep breath, I resumed my descent, the metal stairs groaning softly under my weight. As I descended further into the abyss, the darkness seemed to press in around me, suffocating and oppressive. Every step felt like a leap into the unknown, my heart pounding in my chest as I delved deeper into the depths below. After what felt like an eternity, I finally reached the bottom of the staircase, my feet touching solid ground once more. I stood there for a moment, my senses on high alert as I surveyed my surroundings. The air was stale and musty, tinged with the scent of damp earth and decay. I could hear the faint sound of water dripping somewhere in the distance, echoing off the cavern walls. I cautiously made my way forward, my flashlight casting a feeble beam of light into the darkness. The ground was uneven beneath my feet, littered with loose rocks and debris. As I explored further, I stumbled upon a series of tunnels branching off in different directions, disappearing into the darkness beyond. Each one seemed to beckon me with the promise of adventure and discovery. With a sense of trepidation, I chose a tunnel at random and began to venture deeper into the labyrinthine passageways. The walls seemed to close in around me, the darkness pressing in from all sides. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes followed my every move. But still, I pressed on, driven by a curiosity that bordered on obsession. Hours passed as I wandered through the maze of tunnels, my senses on high alert for any sign of danger. But aside from the occasional scuttle of a rodent or the distant echo of dripping water, the tunnels remained eerily silent. Just when I was beginning to lose hope of ever finding anything of interest, I stumbled upon a chamber unlike any I had seen before. The walls were adorned with strange symbols and markings, their meaning lost to the ages. In the center of the chamber stood a pedestal, upon which rested a small, ornate box. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before, intricately carved and adorned with precious stones. With trembling hands, I reached out and opened the box revealing its contents to the dim light of my flashlight. Inside lay a series of documents, their pages yellowed with age and covered in faded ink. As I began to read, I realized that I had stumbled upon something far greater than I could have ever imagined. A hidden cache of classified government documents detailing experiments conducted in secret during the Cold War a sense of awe and disbelief. I realized that I had uncovered a piece of history that had long been forgotten, hidden away in the depths of the earth. And as I stood there, surrounded by the echoes of the past, I knew that my journey was far from over, hallucination or blackout episode. They urged me to seek medical attention, fearing that I might have suffered a concussion or some other serious injury. Despite their concerns, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to the mysterious staircase I had discovered. The memory of that brief glimpse into the darkness haunted me, filling me with a sense of unease that I couldn't explain. As we packed up our gear and prepared to leave the motel, I couldn't help but feel a sense of trepidation at the thought of returning to the abandoned installation. Part of me was desperate to uncover the truth behind the staircase, to unravel the mysteries hidden within its depths, but another part of me feared what I might find, knowing that some secrets were best left undisturbed. In the end, we decided to leave the installation behind us 
opting to focus on our next adventure instead. But as we drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness below held secrets far beyond anything we could imagine. And so, the mystery of the spiral staircase remains unsolved, a haunting reminder of the dangers that lurk in the forgotten corners of the world. But perhaps someday, when the time is right, I will return to uncover the truth once and for all. Until then, the memory of that fateful night will continue to linger in the recesses of my mind, a tantalizing glimpse into a world beyond our own, or provide any other identifying information. After that incident, I became extremely cautious about my online presence. I deleted my social media accounts and vowed never to engage with strangers online again. It was a wake-up call about the dangers that lurked in the digital world, and I wasn't willing to take any more risks. Despite my efforts to move on, the experience left me feeling shaken and vulnerable. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone out there was watching me, waiting for the opportunity to strike. It was a paranoia that followed me everywhere, casting a shadow over even the most mundane aspects of my life. In the weeks that followed, I found myself constantly looking over my shoulder, jumping at every unexpected noise and avoiding any situation that might put me at risk. It was a constant battle to regain a sense of normalcy, to shake off the fear that had taken hold of me. But even as time passed and the memory of that terrifying ordeal faded into the background, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. It was as if the specter of that online predator still loomed over me a reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows of the internet. And so, I made a conscious decision to disconnect from the digital world as much as possible, opting instead for a simpler, more analog way of life. It wasn't easy, and there were times when I felt isolated and alone, but in the end, it was worth it for the peace of mind it brought me. Now. As I look back on that harrowing experience, I'm grateful for the lessons it taught me. It may have been a terrifying ordeal, but it also served as a stark reminder of the importance of staying vigilant and protecting myself from the dangers that lurk in the digital world. Years since that incident, and I still can't shake off the feeling of fear vulnerability that it left me with. It's a constant reminder that danger can lurk around any corner, that the world is full of unpredictable and potentially dangerous individuals. After that incident, I struggled with anxiety and paranoia, constantly looking over my shoulder and jumping at the slightest unexpected noise. It took me a long time to regain a sense of safety and security. And even now, I still find myself wary of strangers and unfamiliar situations. But despite the lingering fear, I refuse to let it control me. I've learned to be more cautious and vigilant, to trust my instincts and take steps to protect myself from harm. I've also surrounded myself with supportive friends and family who help me feel safe and secure in my daily life. Looking back, I realize how fortunate I am to have escaped that situation with my life. It's a sobering reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of staying vigilant in the face of danger. As I continue on my journey, I carry the lessons I've learned with me knowing that I am stronger and more resilient because of them. And while I may never fully shake off the memories of those terrifying experiences, I refuse to let them define me. Instead, I choose to focus on the future,
embracing each day as a new opportunity to live my life to the fullest, no matter what challenges may come my way. Of summer, it was a typical night. We were roasting marshmallows, telling stories, and just enjoying each other's company. We had found a secluded spot deep in the woods, away from any houses or roads. It was perfect for a night of relaxation and fun as the night wore on and the fire began to die down. We started to pack up our things and head back to our cars. That's when we heard it. A rustling in the bushes nearby. We all froze and listened intently, trying to figure out what it could be. At first, we thought it might be an animal, maybe a raccoon or a deer. But as the noise grew louder, we realized it was something else. Entirely suddenly, a figure emerged from the darkness, staggering towards us. It was a man, but he didn't look right. His movements were erratic, and his eyes were wild with fear. Or maybe something else we couldn't tell. He stumbled closer to us, muttering incomprehensible words under his breath. We were all frozen in fear, unsure of what to do. Then he collapsed at our feet, unconscious, and we realized he was covered in scratches and bruises, as if he had been running through the woods for hours. We called for help and waited with him until the paramedics arrived. They took him away, and we never found out who he was or what had happened to him that night. But it was a sobering reminder that even in the safety of our own little world in the woods, danger could still find us lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. These are certainly some chilling and unsettling stories. It seems like each experience left a lasting impact on those involved. Whether it was encountering strange phenomena narrowly escaping danger, or feeling the presence of something inexplicable, from encountering mysterious figures in the woods to eerie encounters with strangers and unexplained occurrences in hotels. These stories remind us that sometimes reality can be just as frightening as fiction. It's understandable how these experiences would leave a lasting impression, and perhaps even shape one's beliefs or behaviors in the future.